Okay, we're back, and we're doing some mechanics. In this case, we're looking at uh, a kind of a classic problem. This one pops up quite a bit because it involves a few different ideas. And this one is uh, kind of like a, along the lines of a roller coaster, okay, a loop-to-loop. -loop. What's the minimum height that a block needs to start at if you let it go from rest so that it can just make it around a loop-to-loop -loop at the bottom of the hill uh, where it doesn't fall off? But if it goes any slower, it will fall off. Okay, so it's kind of like your, your minimum conditions that you need for this to work. So if you're an engineer, this is something that you'd be interested in. Now let's assume a frictionless surface. And uh, I guess probably the first step in the process is to try to figure out what the minimum speed is when you're upside down. Obviously when this block is upside down up here at, at the top of the loop, that's kind of your critical point. So the two key ideas that come into play here uh, if you're going around a circular loop, you have circular motion. So any circular motion problem, we know we're going to have to deal with centripetal force, mv squared over r. Now that also means that we have to set up a force diagram for this. Well, let's see. The force diagram, obviously you're going to have gravity, trying to pull it down. And also, when you're going around the track, um, for example, when, when the block is moving upwards over here on the right side, its m momentum, its inertia, wants to keep the block moving upwards. So as, as the track curves over, the block keeps moving upwards and it presses up against the track. Okay? Think of that as your action force. What's the equal and opposite reaction? Well, it's the track pushing down on the block, and that gives you a normal force. So at the top of the loop, both forces are pointing downwards, and that points right towards the center of the circle that you're going around. So to, to do some, um, a circular motion problem, what points along that radius? Well, we've got gravity pointing towards the center, that's a positive centripetal force, and we've got the normal force pointing down, that's a positive centripetal force. Now the trick is, we, we need the minimum speed. In other words, if we go too slow, the block is going to start to fall off of the track, and that would be bad. If you're just starting to fall off the track, think about that normal force. That means your normal force gets really small and approaches zero. So the minimum speed is if we solve the remaining uh, equation. Notice, in this case now, with the normal force gone, the mass drops out. And your minimum speed, if we solve for that, uh, the radius comes up, it's going to be the square root of the acceleration of gravity times the radius of your loop. Okay, so that's step one. Now that we know how fast we have to be going at the top of the loop, we can try to figure out, uh, using energy, what's that height that we need starting off in the first place. What, how much potential energy is going to give you enough kinetic energy at the top of the loop so that you don't fall off. And so that, that looks at energy. Now we assume that we're going to start at rest. So that's all potential energy, mgh. Now think about when you're at the top of the loop. Uh, you're going to still have some potential energy. Where the height now is the full diameter of, of your loop. So that's two times the radius of your loop. That's your potential energy. And you have to be moving. If you were to stop up there, well, you're in trouble because you're just going to fall off. So you have to still be moving. And we figured out just now what that minimum speed is. OK, so I'm going to plug in that minimum speed, the square root of, of acceleration of gravity times radius. And I have to square that. That's what your energy equation looks like. Now I can simplify a little bit. Notice that the mass drops out. So it doesn't matter how big or small the block is, it's going to make it around as long as you're going fast enough. And if we go through and simplify the right-hand side, we have uh, 2 times acceleration of gravity times radius. Now over here we've got 1 half. Okay, when we square that, Grav or, uh, acceleration of gravity times radius. Well, that's two and a half. 
acceleration gravity times radius. Okay, uh, the acceleration of gravity drops out, and we now have our minimum height, and it's two and a half times the radius of the loop. Now, what do you suppose the most common answer is for this? Without people thinking very much, um, a lot of people would want to say the minimum height, well, it should just be the height of the loop. But we show that that's, that's not correct. Okay, That'll get you to the top of the loop. No, no question about it. If there's no friction, no loss of energy, that'll get you to the top of the loop. But the trouble is, when you get there, your speed's going to be zero and you simply will fall off the track straight down and if this is a real roller coaster that would be bad and we can't have that instead we have to think about what does it take to stay in a circle well it takes speed, it takes centripetal force to stay in a circle and we found that minimum speed that's what we installed and substituted into our energy equation to figure out the right energy so you do have to start higher than the top of the loop by half of a radius. Okay, so again, it's kind of a kind of a neat little problem. It involves several ideas: force diagrams, centripetal force, and energy. Uh, but in the end, it, it's certainly workable. Um, and hopefully, this this gives you some insight as to how we can combine these ideas together to to figure out reality. So until next time, we'll see you later.